Okay, so um, now when all seems lost is they actually make it to the top of the mountain and there's no gods. Uh, it's like this huge palace that just seems deserted. There's like gigantic statues with four arms and some with, you know, or, you know, I'm at four sets of arms, eight arms, some with six arms, some with four arms. And they kind of like resemble in some way like Hindu deities with like elf heads and or elephant heads, I mean, and stuff. And um, huge, gigantic statues. And this place is just beautiful but seems totally deserted no one's around where are the gods and you know now it's like just all hope seems lost like what the hell are we going to do now and then some big creature comes down and takes cloud away some big flying creature takes cloud away and so now she's stuck here with you know maybe that guy with the arms out of his head or somebody else might be with her i don't know yet if or if they or if they decided to stay at the at the bottom or whatever but anyway so um yeah, so now she seems all is lost. Cloud's gone. How am I going to defeat the the bringer? She doesn't know how. She like, cries out, please help me. I came all this way. And the gods appear and tell her she has to make a choice. They'll answer one question and one question only. Do you want to know where Cloud's at? That you can go save him? Or do you want to know how to defeat the soul bringer? So that's where she has to make that moral, that moral decision. Okay, and then the climax is where she fights the soul bringer. She finds her inner strength uh, by having confidence in herself and looking at herself differently. And then she defeats him and defeats all the soul bringers as well. And everyone's restored. They get back to their place. Aftermath is that everyone's restored. Her best friend, her mother, everything seems back to good and normal. Uh, the thematic revelation is revealed. Um, the, her moral self-revelation is revealed. Once the moral self-revelation is revealed, that is, she sees herself differently, that's when she's a able to defeat him. The moral decision happens back here. And then, because uh, these don't have to be in order. And then the thematic revelation is revealed. Uh, two of them are actually revealed by how it ends. Um, the brother-sister thing and then uh, this uh, finding your inner strength. So that that's actually revealed by how she defeats him, and you say, "Ah, oh, that is, she did find her inner strength by uh, seeing herself differently." By the moral self revelation led to the thematic revelation by how she defeated him. Okay, and then um, yeah, that's pretty much it, and everything's good, happy. So a few other things I just want to plug in is you know the setup I already went through, like how I know the setup's going to be. And then I then I start thinking about like. The new situation, where does the setup lead her after she has this new opportunity? You know, this kind of leads her to seeing the thing, and then she goes over to Cloud, and then, then her, you know, her uh, best friend turns into it, and that's bad. And then, you know, now we have her desire, which is to save her best friend. Her first action into doing that what was to, um, to go into the water elves' territory where they're not supposed to go. And then uh, she has a plan to reach that goal, which was just to save her friend. And that was first going here. But then she is going to rechange her plans along the way when she meets that weird, crazy lady that says you need to go to the gods. And, you know, she goes to the, the sorrow of anger or the tar of anger. She um, defeats Pan. So her her that that's that's gives her her further action. Um, that she, you know, and, and like I want them to be like immoral actions too, where she like decides to press on and throw these people into danger that are coming along with her, um, because hey, we have to, we have to go. I don't care what it takes. We're gonna go and find this. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow these things and find out where they're going, maybe. And that kind of first leads them on their path until they find that old lady, and then she re-steers them. Um, then maybe she's, I don't know what immoral action she'll do yet, but she needs to do more moral actions somewhere in here uh, where, you know, the character like Cloud or something criticized her, like, you're not handling this right or something. Uh, she has that revelation about when she sees the soul eater thing, um, more obsessive drive, you know, just start plugging this stuff in. So that's all pretty much plugged in, complications, gives it all. So yeah, I pretty much covered everything. So there you go. That's how I do it. That's how I come up with the story. Then it's just a matter of when I'm working out my outline, I just think of more scenes to plug in here and put more details into what her, you know, maybe what her more actions will be. And maybe if she'll have a fake opponent or fake ally, 
little things like that. I, I know that one twist at the end is is kind of cool where Cloud's taken and she has to make that decision and then also finds out that Cloud, one other twist at the very end of the aftermath where you usually don't have a twist, you know, that Cloud is her half-brother and that's just kind of cool. So, yeah, there it is. That's my fantasy story. Um, cool. I love going through this process. I always think of really cool ideas and I thought of a lot of cool ideas while going through this process with you here. And I'll come with more ideas once I flesh out and go through this a couple more times putting out these little details and then writing up my outline. I'll come up probably more ideas while I'm writing my outline. And then I, I usually like to try to write a synopsis now and then, you know, write the final version after I finish the novel, but uh, at least a one page synopsis. So that's kind of cool. Synopsis are really hard to write. Like, I don't know why it's just this, the way they are. It's just so weird. You have to like, sum up a whole novel on like a page. At least the one page synopsis is really hard to write. Two pages hard to write. Even eight pages is hard to write because you have to sub, sum up a whole novel in eight pages. Really difficult. But using this here, once you have gone through all this, writing outline is easy, and then writing the synopsis is pretty easy. The synopsis will will pretty much only stick to these points here. That's it. That is, it'll stick to the turning points, and just really brief, briefly touch on these points here. That's it. That's your synopsis. You know, um, if it's a eight page synopsis, then you can you know, fill in more of these details, but you really just stick to the main points of the story. If it's a romance, you stick to the, the, ro the turning points in the romance of the relationship. Okay, so um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that now you, well, I'm confident that if you went through all of this, that you definitely have more ideas for your story. You probably thought of ideas while listening to this. And if you use this process, take this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a link to this here. So you can download this if you want and use it and stare at it and come up with ideas. That, you know, that's how I use it. I sit here and stare at this and I work all of these things out, write notes. Um, yeah, so I'll make that available as well. And um, use it. Leave comments. Let me know if, if it's helped you come up with cool story ideas or helped you work out a problem that you had in your story or add more depth to your characters uh, by going through this process here and uh, working out your character, making them you know, more deep, all your characters, and then how your characters interact and how they feel about the theme, give them different views on the theme, and all that. Okay, so that's that, and again, I'll be um, putting all my videos on writing on Master Edit, and also articles about writing on Master Edit, and please check out Master Edit. I'm telling you, you'll love the software. It's just absolutely awesome. Um, I'm going to be um, uploading another thing on, uh, what was it, uh, show and tell, show and don't and don't just tell. I'm going to have a video series on that up. And uh, let's see here, another one up on, on powerful sentences, but it's going to be a different one. It'll be for writing, uh, for style, for developing your style and writing cool, concise sentences uh, that have style and that have grace and elegance. And that's going to be a bunch of cool techniques that that I've learned from a couple different books and just really great writers. So anyway, that'll be that'll be cool. But Master Edit, that software, helps you develop your style more, and helps you catch all the mistakes that even editors miss. It just does so much cool stuff. So also look for my video that will be uh, showing how to use Master Edit and what it does. It's just really fantastic software, and it's and, and it's really cheap. Um, I think it's thirty bucks. And it's one. It's a download. You don't have to keep paying yearly like AutoCrit. We have to pay yearly. What a jip. Uh, what's you know pay once. You don't have to download anything. It's uh, well you have to download the you know. You, but what I meant to is you don't have to install anything. It just works automatically. You just open it and it works because it works off the Windows architecture. So you don't have to install it and worry about uninstalling it and all that kind of stuff. It just boom. You just use it and you can just plop that exe on any computer laptop and you can use it and uh, anyway really cool so that's that see you next time